Marine Le Pen and the struggle to be France's president. Marine Le Pen's political awakening came at the age of eight, when she survived a bombing at her family's Paris home. Five kilograms of dynamite had been placed on the landing outside the apartment at 9 Villa Poirier. The explosion ripped open the entire front of the building. A baby in the next door flat fell five floors and was saved by the branches of a tree. In her autobiography, the woman who took over the leadership of France's National Front, FN, from her father describes the chaos, the smoke and debris. She and her two sisters were on our knees shivering, holding hands, praying with the fervor of despair when we heard the voice of our father shouting, Girls, girls, are you alive? Question mark the mystery of who tried to kill Jean Marie Le Pen and his family on the night of November 1, 1976 is still unsolved. At the time the FN was just four years old, a fringe party of the far right including some on the anti-Semitic extreme. For Marine Le Pen the attack changed everything. The family home was destroyed. She lost school friends, whose parents were too scared now to let them near her dangerous father. More profoundly she came to understand that she and her family were different, they would never be treated as normal people. Instead of sympathy. There was hostility. Today, Marine Le Pen is often described as having a hard exterior. After everything she went through in her youth, she built herself a shell, comma, says her friend and senior FN colleague Steve Brea is. Pejorative adjectives like cussant, brittle, and cleavant, divisive, are commonly applied. But at heart, there is that emotional toughness, a determined self reliance whose origins surely lie in the difficult psychological conditions of her childhood. Without that toughness, she could not have pushed the FN to its current unprecedented heights. She now has a genuine chance of winning the French presidency. And without that toughness she could certainly not have achieved the act that made that success possible, the symbolic killing of her father. On a Friday evening in France's rural east, Marine Le Pen has taken her election campaign to a community hall in the small town of clairvaux les lacs Before a mainly working class, mainly middle-aged audience of 300, she develops the themes at the heart of her party's 144-point manifesto, from prioritizing jobs for French nationals to automatic expulsion of undocumented immigrants. Marine Le Pen talks with practiced confidence. In a previous life she was a lawyer who defended in the Paris courts the sort of immigrants she now wants expelled. This is her sixth year as leader of a party traditionally seen as far-right. It is also her second tilt at the presidency. She won third place with nearly 18% in 2012. That bettered anything her father achieved, even in 2002, when he came second to Jacques Chirac on an anti-immigrant, law and order platform. Even more is expected of her now. Watching Marine in action, you can understand the appeal. There is a hint of the everywoman about her. People like the lived-in, authentic persona. The sense she gives of combining hard work with the aura of someone who knows how to have a good time. A political player in France for years, her message, anti immigration, anti EU, is consistent and unchanged. Out here in the sticks, people adore the fact that she is so hated by the establishment in Paris. Marie knows Jean Marie. In daughter as in father, there is the same pugnacity, ready for a scrap with a hostile world. There is the same plain speaking humor, the French call it logu a. To cheers. She declares. There are two things I want to give back to you, the people. Your voice. And your money exclamation mark. Marine Le Pen. Then there is the physical resemblance, with the strong features and the blonde hair. Marine was the third and last Le Pen daughter, and her parents may well have been hoping for a boy. Today Marine's mother Pirette says her daughter is just like Jean Marie with long hair. Jean Marie himself puts it more crudely, she is me with breasts exclamation mark. But today Marine and her father are entirely estranged. The rift is not a charade to help along her political career. It is a total breakdown. The pair have not spoken for more than two years. In this family, politics is stronger than blood, says journalist Olivier Beaumont, author of a book on the Le Pens. Jean Marie could not bear to see someone else, even his own daughter, taking control of the party he had created and controlled for 40 years. It was like a Greek tragedy unfolding and attended like a Greek tragedy, in a symbolic parasite. Olivier Beaumont, journalist. She did an honorable thing, argues Marine's close friend Jean Lynn Le Capel. For the sake of politics and for the sake of France, she did the hardest thing a child can do, she cut the cord with her father.
The final break came in April 2015, when in an interview on French radio Jean-Marie Le Pen did what Marine had long feared he would do. He repeated the detail. Mention the detail to anyone in the National Front today and their face hardens. They know exactly what it means. In September 1987 a dark moment became a turning point in the party's history. In their biography of the man, Pierre Pien and Philippe Cohen call it the de la Pen became Le Pen. He was asked in an interview about a notorious Holocaust denier. Did he share the man's ideas? In his reply, the FN chief was at his ambiguous worst, I do not say that the gas chambers did not exist. I never personally saw them. I have never particularly studied the issue, but I believe they are a point of detail in the history of World War II. Jean Marie Le Pen never escaped from the aftershock of that remark, downplaying the Holocaust. It was a gift to his enemies, who now had evidence that the FN was anti Semitic. Worse, Jean Marie reacted to the hostility by digging in further. Over the years, there were further verbal provocations, and he amassed more than 15 separate convictions in the courts. Then came the 2015 interview and he said the detail all over again. Maureen Le Pen looked on with horror. She disassociated herself from the remarks. Over the years she had become increasingly convinced that her father was incapable of winning power. Worse, maybe he never wanted power. In 2002 Maureen had observed with satisfaction her father's first round success in the presidential race. But what left more of an impression was his utter wipeout in round two. With just 17.8% to Jacques Chirac's 82.2%, Jean Marie had barely made any advance at all from his first round score. Voters had united against him. Jean Marie Le Pen's miserable result in the 2007 election, fourth place on 10.4%, set the seal on his decline. Maybe his real raison d'etre was to be a perpetual gadfly on the back of the French body politic, irritating but irrelevant. Time and again after she was elected as AFN leader in 2011, Marine Le Pen would make clear her desire to normalize the party and make it electable. But time and again Jean-Marie grabbed the headlines with incendiary statements. After his repeat of Le Detail in 2015, he was suspended by the party and soon expelled, though technically he remains its honorary president. A family political drama had reached its climax. The very qualities he had inculcated in Marine by example, the cussedness, the pugnacity, the refusal to back down, were turned against him. Now Marine Le Pen is everywhere, and so are her lieutenants. As the presidential election draws near, Florian Philippot, Nicolas Bay, David Rockline, her partner Louis Alliot, and a handful of others saturate the morning TV talk shows. They are practiced, presentable, professional. Philippot, her close advisor, as his own YouTube channel where he appears in an office kitchen dubbed the Marine Café, railing against the latest factory closure or European free trade deal. For years the party's far-right views were regarded by the French media as toxic, but the boycott is history. A few years ago when I first interviewed Marine Le Pen, I got a kind of free zone with the hairs sticking up at the back of my neck. I felt I was flirting with the untouchable commissaire journalist Elizabeth Levy. So is it truly a party like any other? Ask most observers, and they will say that the process of de-diabolization, de-demonization, is genuine and more or less complete. The older generation with nostalgia for the collaborationist wartime Vichy regime, or for France's colonial rule of Algeria, has moved on. Racist comments are outlawed and people who make them are chased from the FN. In 2010, before being elected leader, Marine Le Pen was roundly criticized after comparing Muslims praying in the street to the German occupation. Now she has softened her tone, saying she does not regard Islam as incompatible with French democracy. The FN has also tried to build bridges with the Jewish community. Meanwhile across the West, other nationalist parties, in Germany, the Netherlands and elsewhere, have emerged which make the FN much less of a French exception. Events to have worked in the FN's favor. The jihadist attacks on Paris and Nice are part of it. But just as much as the popular disillusionment with the Paris and Brussels elites, and the growing fear of what they call in France le déclassement, the loss of economic and social status, people feel poor. We treat the FN like we would any other politicians, comma, says Beatrice Houchard who covers the party for L'Opinion newspaper. No favors, but nor do we go out of our way to find something negative to say. Dot. And with acceptance has come electoral success. After victories in municipal, 
European and regional elections, Marine can arguably claim to lead the country's most popular political party. Such an idea would have been laughable just a few years ago. We are now the number one party among the youth. We are the number one party for the working class. We are the number one party for farmers. Jean Lynn Le Capel. We are making big gains in the civil service, comma, continues Le Capel, Marine Le Pen's close friend. In the police and army, and we are not doing badly among small business owners. We represent a cross section of France. But unlike nationalist parties in some other countries, the FN does not do well among the over 65s. And if normalization of the party is complete why does a shadow still persist over the FN's name? Do the words National Front and Le Pen have a perpetual power to alienate? Its critics strenuously argue the party's ethos is unchanged. For Laurent Joffrin, editor of left-wing Daily Liberation, the FN still favors the insider and scapegoats the outsider. Today the implicit accusation they direct at Muslims is exactly the same as the one they used to direct at Jews. Laurent Joffrin, editor of Liberation. That these people are in some essential way different, and therefore dangerous to national unity, he says. The persistent accusation is that in its modern, normalized form the party is not being entirely frank, that in private, members are far more bigoted than they ever let on openly and that their public discourse is in some way coded. Veteran commentator Alain Duhamel, who has covered every presidential election since 1965, says the FN still has an indirect way of attacking Muslims. When Marine Le Pen champions the exclusion of religion from the public sphere it is a smokescreen for anti-immigration he says. It is Muslim veils, not Christian crosses, that she has in mind. Rejection of Muslims has wide support, especially among the working class according to Cecile Corniadet of Laeco's newspaper. So she uses secularism, or laicite, and defense of women as a way of being anti-Islam. The FN's opponents point out that Marine still has on her staff former members of a far-right militant group called Gd. Many in the Muslim community do not trust her. I'm in Mestoui, a 25-year-old clothes designer of Moroccan parents, sees Marine Le Pen as merely a more presentable version of her father. She's definitely a racist but she hides it better. She hides the Islamophobia. She is totally scary, she says. But this just scratch beneath the surface argument has its limits. If people insist over and again that they do not have a particular opinion, is it fair to judge them by saying that you think they do? In France they call that a perceived intention, putting people on trial for views you tell them that they have. People who resent the allegation that they are racist are voting FN to thumb their noses at the establishment. As for Marine herself, even her enemies, or most of them, stop short of saying she is personally racist. Montretout is a three story, mid 19th century pile in a gated community on a hill above the Seine that overlooks Paris from the west. It sits in its garden at the end of a private road next to several other houses of similar vintage. This is where the Le Pens lived from 1976, after Jean Marie inherited the property from a cement magnate who was a political supporter. It was a highly controversial gift. The late magnate's brother contested it, but in the end the house became an integral part of the Le Pen saga. It is very symbolic. Aloof, on a hill, with this magnificent view over the capital, it is just like Jean Marie himself, who was always looking on the system from outside, comma, says Olivier Beaumont, whose book on the Le Pens is called In the Hell of Montretout. It's quite scary looking, a bit like the house in Psycho. Which fits too, because the Le Pens have always given the establishment the shivers. Olivier Beaumont, journalist. Even today the house is part of the story. Marine carried on living at the Le Pen estate into her forties, in a bungalow in the grounds. In the summer of 2014 she finally moved out. It was at the height of the row with her father. The things I saw there you would not believe. She and her father were 100 meters apart but communicating via intermediaries. It was vaudeville comma says a former senior advisor to Marine who asks not to be identified. Again, the final straw could not have been more symbolic. It came when one of Jean Marie's dogs killed his daughter's adored cat, Artemis. For Marine, who sometimes says she wishes she could give it all up and open a cattery, it was all too much. Today Montretout is home on the second floor to Jean Marie's second daughter Yan, mother of the rising young FN star Marion Maréchal Le Pen. The eldest Le Pen daughter Marie Carolyn is, like Marine, 
estranged from her father and lives elsewhere. In her case the split goes back to 2002, they haven't talked since. Jean Marie no longer lives in the house but he comes every day to his office on the first floor. Meanwhile, in the bungalow, there now resides his former wife Pirette, mother of the three girls. The same Pirette who left him in 1984 swearing he was the devil incarnate, and then posed nude in Playboy as an act of revenge. Revenge.